Hey chart friends, tuning in to the market here and we usually look at SPY and the reason I look at SPY rather than SPX for the S&P 500 is for tradability just in terms of options trading and for just ease of actual trading instruments. But when we have a dividend distribution, it causes an artificial change in the price. So we can see here, this is what SPY looks like with that dividend distribution. And when the dividend is distributed, we have the price artificially drop down to reflect that dividend payment. So if we look at what SPX did without that dividend distribution, it's a different setup. We had very clear continuation. Whereas for SPY, if you look at this, you would say, wow, we rejected from resistance. When in reality, that's not what happened with the S&P 500. So switching for SPX for now, just until things normalize a bit. But the pattern I'm watching here is a higher low every single day. And this has been taking place for five days in a row now. Quadruple witching day didn't really have a whole lot of volatility. We've certainly seen things more volatile in the recent past. So pretty timid day overall, but it's keeping the bulls in control. Looking at the four hour time frame, we had a four hour bull flag confirm into Friday. And on the hourly time frame, still healthy consolidation, still watching the 12 period exponential moving average, which has been holding as support this entire way up. Signal number one that we're going to see daily consolidation would be losing this exponential moving average, losing the hourly uptrend, or losing, I should say and, because they'll probably all happen at once, and losing the higher low everyday pattern. So the bulls do still have full control. There's no doubt about that. They have the trend in their favor. We're just a little bit extended considering we went from 27.22 all the way up to 28.22 and beyond in just a few days. So that's about a 4% move in just about six days with very limited consolidation. So a lot of people are looking at the narrative of buy share buybacks going into a blackout period here at the end of the month, and it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy or can be, and it's the same with technical analysis as well. If there's enough people prescribing to a certain mindset, we oftentimes see that follow through. So the rise of popularity in technical analysis, if we're looking at the 200 day moving average support, and you know, five, 10 years ago, you have a thousand people looking at that support. And now with the popularity growing, you have 10,000, 100,000, a million people looking at that support. It's going to react differently and more strong, in my opinion. So if this narrative catches on, like we're seeing on Twitter and we're seeing you know, on CNBC that everybody's expecting a pullback because companies are not going to be buying back their shares and that's going to diminish buying power a little bit. It's going to diminish the demand for shares, whereas the supply of shares is going to remain pretty much the same. So that could be a potential catalyst to be looking for a pullback. We will just be looking for a daily higher low to form compared to 2722. The bulls have certainly gotten themselves a lot of space to work with. And again, that statistic we pointed out in the recent video where 25 of the last 35 years, 71% of the time, we have seen a red week, not a green week, following the March quadruple witching date. So those are all things we're keeping in mind, which would have me personally, it's the kind of scenario where I will be scouting. If I'm looking just short term, I'll be scouting for a bearish entry. And if I don't see something that I like, then I just won't be trading because making a bullish entry at this point is not favorable for my current setup and situation. That being said, there are sectors that I will play bullish. You know, the, the MJ sector or things like that are ways that I will play into market strength because th those setups are, are definitely varied than what we have here on SPY. But the bottom line is bulls are comfortable in their positions and looking for just a healthy daily high or low. Bears certainly shouldn't expect too much from a pullback because of the size of the most recent bounce. And if we look on the weekly time frame, we just got our continuation move and it's now our new line in the sand, 2722. As long as that level holds, bulls keep absolute full control and keep looking towards that all time high. If we lose the weekly uptrend, the monthly equilibrium is going to play out. If we do not lose the weekly uptrend, it's not going to play out. So we have the high, low, we're watching for a monthly lower high to potentially be set, but that's only going to happen if we lose the weekly uptrend and shift this momentum. And that's certainly something to be watching for. If anybody can just go V-shaped recovery, it's the S&P 500. We've certainly seen that many times in the past. But if we're looking at most probable scenario, and if you didn't tell me what this ticker was and you showed me this chart, I would say scout for this lower high to be set because after that much volatility, a tightening range and an equilibrium on the monthly timeframe is the most likely scenario going forward. Back here, we had 
the January pullback, and that was just a continuation move. We pulled back 12% and then saw a V-shaped recovery to new all-time highs. But in this instance, it's a much more significant pullback of 20%. So the odds of just V-shaped recovering to all-time highs are less likely in my opinion. So again, I am cautious in this area because this monthly time frame and all my technical analysis experience over the last eight, nine years would tell me that the most likely scenario is a lower high here. So that's what I'm keeping an eye out for and keeping an eye out for the, the shorter term signal signs to line up with the longer term most likely scenario. IWM. So IWM got a bull break, but not much follow through at all. 155.73 was the high of this move and we got up to 155.87. Key support short term is 154.20, the low of this pullback. And if we break that level, we will very clearly have our highs up here, the low of the pullback, our lower high will be set, and then we'll look for the higher low to form. The quad witching day gave the bulls a bit of extra momentum after already starting some of that consolidation, but still looking for a daily lower high to be set and the need to require, or I should say the need to form a higher low. And that's the same thing with SPY. We're just looking for SPY to pull back and form a higher low. And that's what we're looking for on most of these markets to do. Very clear that QQQ maintains the lead bull status and is the reason why the S&P 500 has been so strong the last week. Look at all these gap ups. Continuation move, again, just higher lows every single day at this point and a clear bull break on Friday getting that continuation. Again, the RSI on the daily is a bit of a concern for the bulls because you have to wonder how much more upside can we see with the RSI at this point. We topped out at 68 the first time around. Here we are right up at 70 and we scroll back historically and we can see that yes, we can stay over 70 for some prolonged periods of time, but in the recent past, we have very briefly gotten over 70 or rejected right off of it. So if I'm looking at the most recent examples, I would say that the odds of consolidation are pretty likely. But if we were to look back at the total bigger picture, we could say that there have been plenty of times back in 2017 where we stayed over that 70 RSI mark for a pretty significant amount of time. So it's worth keeping an eye on, but history tells us that it could go either way, putting more weight in the most recent history that shows us that we haven't gotten that far over the 70 level pretty much in the last, oh, year and a half, two years of trading. So if we look at the hourly uptrend on QQQ, very clearly still intact at this point as well. The four-hour uptrend, very bullish. Have to lose the hourly and the four-hour uptrend to be looking for daily consolidation to try and form that higher low. XLF, we can see, is not nearly as strong as QQQ. Didn't make it back to the recent high yet, but we're also not getting the signal that we have topped out yet. So pretty much the same range on Thursday and Friday, very similar. And we can see the higher low on the hourly is 26.54, key support. Bulls didn't break 26.68 by much. We just broke it by a couple pennies. So if we lose the hourly uptrend without breaking 26.71, we'll look for daily consolidation to be underway to form that higher low in the tightening range that is currently set up. XBI is in a similar standpoint. We have the high, the low of the pullback. Now we're trading sideways a little bit, very tight range on Friday with an inside bar. And if we lose the hourly uptrend here, by breaking support of, I would say the most important support is 90.85 and then 90.43. If we start to take out those levels, we zoom out to the daily, our daily lower high will be set if that does end up occurring. And we're going to look for the higher low to form perhaps in the $88 range. So similar to XLF. And again, we can just distinguish these individual names where XBI and XLF still tightening patterns on the daily as is IWM likely to see those ranges tighten up, whereas QQQ got the continuation move and SPX on the daily time frame also got the continuation move. So those two are clearly stronger, everybody else a bit weaker, and we're watching to see how they all continue to interact and how the correlations continue to play out. Oil is still a significant factor. There's been a lot of correlation with SPY or the S&P 500 and oil over the past week. We'll look at that in the commodities video that I'm going to do later today, and let's wrap it up with VIX. So VIX dropped down to lower lows very clearly. Weekly chart dropped a lower high at 18.30, and now we're dropping down to new levels. So where is the next level that we have seen price action? It's down at 11.30. So there's a lot of people that are starting to eye the VIX here after pulling back for six days in a row and just looking for a bounce. Whether or not we see any kind of significant major move remains to be seen, but at this sign, or I should say with this amount of pullback six days in a row, we should be looking for a short-term bounce in the near future. And it's the kind of scenario where, you know, for, for VIX and the volatility sector, I haven't traded it 
uh, extensively. I've certainly traded TVIX and UVXY plenty of times, but in terms of, you know, there's traders out there who just specialize in the volatility index. But for me personally, just with my trading style, what I would look to do when we get to scenarios where it looks like we're due for a bit of a bounce to take place, I would try and make entries and I would try and get in scenarios where I can put my stop losses at break even on TVIX and UVXY and then try and let it play out. And if it's only a small bounce and I end up getting stopped out without much follow through, that's fine. Break even trade or small loss is no big deal, but there's you know, scenarios in the past where it ends up being huge gains if getting the timing right. So almost like, you know, trying to get that timing right, just ensuring that you're protective and not consistently playing against the trend and taking, you know, solid losses multiple times a week, trying to time the the VIX on a bounce. So that's def that's how I would play it personally. But again, there aren't many times where I see a clear setup that I like in the volatility index. And again, I'm focused on other sectors like the marijuana sector and not really putting a ton of my attention into the volatility index. So that's where we stand heading into this coming week. We'll see if the pullback gets going. And then once we do start to pull back and look to form the higher low after breaking the higher low every single day pattern, we're going to watch volume. We're going to watch to see, you know, is the consolidation a bull flag looking for continuation due to lack of resistance until the all-time highs? Or is the consolidation significant enough for us to look for uh, more more time in a, a sideways range kind of deal. So the size of consolidation can gives us give us clues, and that's what we're going to be watching for. Hope you're well. We'll see you soon. Do some good things out there in the world. It's almost time to plant flowers and stuff. Just bought a bunch of seed and soil. Get some starts going. It's exciting. So we got a lot of pictures this time around. One of the highlights of the trip. So when I was at the Conundrum Hot Springs from last time around, people suggested going to Ice Lake Basin, and I said, sure, why not? I got nothing better to do. So headed that way, just some more campsites along the way, leaving some footprints and some towns. This is Ure and Silverton that I was going past. Just some really cool, small little towns nestled in the heart of some huge mountains with some really cool roads going through them. And there's so many pull-offs and so many views. It's hard to stay concentrated when you are new to Colorado and it's just these massive scenic views all around. There's some really cool colors on these mountains. Obviously it doesn't do it justice here, but different minerals eroding away and red and yellow and brown and orange. There's another little cute town from above. So this is the hike up to Ice Lake Basin. And I was pretty beat up that day. I forget why. It wasn't too brutal of a hike. It was pretty steep. Had a big pack on, had a big water jug and all that. But I got to this point, which is pretty much there's two levels. There's one level up and then there's another one. And I saw tents over here and I thought, hmm, this is a nice spot. Cool mountain, little lake. Maybe I'll just pitch my tent here for the night. And I said, no, I'll keep going up. It might be worth it. And it certainly was one of the best spots that I went to on the entire road trip just in terms of you know astounding beauty and a fun aside is this has been the background of my computer for the last see i'm not lying for the last three years and my previous partner went over her house one day and the background of her computer is pretty much this exact picture but from maybe 50 100 feet to the right and in the winter exact same place and it was from her trip to ice lake basin so that was some pretty cool synergy but there was a a marmot who lived there some nice wildflowers the wildflowers were mind-blowing as you can see just again so much more than i anticipated would be in a pretty arid environment that is colorado but just lush wildflowers at the right time of year and this was the uh you know surround sound or surround view panoramic view all around that's my favorite camping spot sweet picture did have a thunderstorm roll up out of nowhere that's the danger this is up over the tree line over 11,000 feet up i think it was somewhere around i forget between 11 and 12 but a storm came out of nowhere from behind this ridge and dropped a little bit of snow a little bit of hail that very quickly melted but just in terms of the speed that it came over with no warning, but you can't see the clouds on the other side. So that was definitely a wake up call to be more attentive. This was a rock that a marmot lived under and that's just his life. This is what he looks at every single day. The rock is pretty much right where I'm standing. 
and that I that was blowing my mind that that's just all he knows. That's just that's outside for him. Pretty good luck out in terms of where that dude found to live. So this is now pretty much I stayed for two days and my agenda was I wonder what this looks like from that mountaintop or that mountaintop. So this is me exploring right here, this little river that's feeding or this creek feeding the runoff into this extremely mineral rich. That's why it's this color. Ice cold, did dive in, but only you can only stay in there for, you know, a minute or two. But ended up hiking up into that little crevice to see where it went. And there was some cool snow melting and some, again, the, the white rocks of the minerals running off of the mountains and some cool sculptures of snow. And that's one of the views from above. And you can see it's just valleys down there below. That's where you hike up. And that's the river that I climbed up. And then you can see it going down even further. That's where my picture was and where I took, where I put my tent up. And again, it's the kind of thing where I was alone in this place, the vast majority. There were two women that camped a bit further up. And other than that, I had this entire place to myself. This is from another peak. So that last picture was from up here. And then this is from a completely different angle. And it's a good spot. You should go to Ice Lake, Ice Lake Basin in Colorado. And that's the view back down the valley from where we hiked up, where I hiked up. And I had something, I got all poetic up there. And I, I do a thing where I associate music with memories. So I have a really good memory in terms of memorizing things in school and memorizing lyrics of songs. So what I'll do is I'll be in a moment and I'll suck in that moment as much as I can while I'm playing music. And I associate that memory and the sense and all my senses with that song. And so for this song or for this memory, I was sitting up there at sunset and I was playing Fool on the Hill. And so now anytime that I hear Fool on the Hill by the Beatles, I'm taken right back to this spot and it's a very vivid memory for me. And I do that with a lot of songs and a lot of places that I go. So potentially something you can play with yourself, but it's really good for memory recognition for me to have an audio trigger almost to bring me back into that moment. I got poetic and I wrote something about religion and I'll see if I can find it. I'll be right back. I can't find it, but I recreated it for this post a while ago. Some of the similar themes. Anyways, that's that. That's Ice Lake Basin, Colorado. Go to it and we'll see you tomorrow.